uh, mm. council staff earning more than a hundred grand now at a nine-year high. Yeah, look, I think the most galling thing about this story isn't that people are earning, you know, uh, high salaries. Um, it, you know, generally British people aren't. It's not the politics of envy for most people. Um, if the service is good, then, yes. then people will look at it differently. They're happy but, to pay for services. Uh, They're happy to, people are generally happy to pay tax if they get the services back. But, but just to, so to highlight from this story, um, the highest, the, the council with the highest number of, of um, uh, with the highest paid uh, official of the whole list, has already warned that it's going to effectively go bankrupt this year. That's Hampshire. Um, it's announced count cuts to museums, waste tips, and services for the homeless. The second, uh, the council that has the second highest number of people over uh, earning six figures is Greenwich. Greenwich councils has already said it's, go it's going to cut street cleaning and get rid of lollipop ladies. Not so, the lollipop ladies. Not the lollipop, lollipop ladies. ladies. I mean, these are really, really basic services, aren't they? Yeah. They're really basic things that people pay for. And I mean, I wonder, is this just about inefficiency or is this actually about the fact that maybe councils have been, a lot of money has been taken away from them in recent years? Matthew? Well, I was astonished because this is actually a story on the front page of the Daily Mail as well. And it seems to me that, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, dozens of council leaders or council workers are earning more than the Prime Minister. Yeah. Now, I agree with everyone that, it's, that we all want value for money and I respect the job that a lot of councillors do. I mean, it's hard work. It's not an easy thing. It's not thing. harder than being the Prime Minister. But it's not harder than being a Prime Minister, exactly so. So, yeah, that's very, very odd. I mean, Perhaps clearly... a little less glamorous. I mean... Maybe. No, a little less. Not as many helicopters, there, as far as I'm aware. In terms of why councils are struggling, some of them very seriously, I mean, there are all sorts of reasons, aren't there? But ultimately, this is happening under the watch of the government, the centralised government, and you could argue that ultimately, therefore, it's their responsibility. So if and when Labour get into power, they've got a real mess to sort out. Uh, do you think it should be made law that somebody who works uh, for a particular council should live in that council area? I'd certainly support that. I'm not sure whether it should be yeah, I don't think law. regulation is, is what we need. I think. There are 188 of these people who are earning these really, really high salaries. I mean, that will stick in the craw of a lot of people, especially with the average wage being £35,000 mm. a year in this country. People who are really struggling in, with the cost of living. Look, running a council is an important thing. You want the right people to do it. But at the same time, these salaries seem very high, especially with the Hampshire example you give, Anna. They're, they're not doing it correctly well, if it's, it's going to go it's bankrupt. People, people pay for failure. I think that's what really really annoys people, rightly so. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then, of course, when these councils go bankrupt, do those people lose their jobs? No. Do they get demoted? Usually not. What's the answer then? Um, do we reduce the salaries? Would that lose people within town hall? Yeah, I'm not sure that the salaries themselves have much to do with why councils are failing. But right. you can understand why the press, particularly the right-wing press, are going after this as a story. And there's nothing wrong with focusing the minds of councillors, is there? Because accountability matters.